Making regalia is made possible in part by Bernina of Oklahoma City, providers of quality precision sewing machines. And by War Child Society, designers of native apparel, t-shirts, decals, and more. And by generous contributions from viewers like you. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Making Regalia with me, Joaquin Lone Lodge, based here in Concho, Oklahoma. Uh, today I've got another great uh, show for you. Um, bringing back to the show um, our one and only Tara Huska. Tara, how are things going today? Great, how are you? Pretty good. And today we're going to finish up our segment on our tea dress. Uh, today we're going to show you uh, how to um, actually sew it together, right? Yep. Hopefully left side, right side, perfectly. We're Neck, just, yeah, sleeves, exactly. the important part. Yeah, and, and today, you know, we're working with this very, like this, this broadcloth here in the power world is one of the top notch pieces of material. This stuff is pretty expensive. So, you know, I, I always advise, you know, if you're gonna start working with this kind of material, start with, you know, maybe like some cotton material, like, but you know, until you get to the big boy stage actually working with this stuff, this stuff kind of goes for what, $60, $70 a yard? This is actually $85 a yard. Ouch, yeah. So you don't want to make too many mistakes with this, uh, but you know, you know, going back, you know, like I say, just practice before you actually get to this level. Um, so Tara, um, tell us like, you know, how long you've been dancing like uh, women's cloth? I've been dancing women's cloth until uh, since 2006. Mm -hmm. And you pretty much made all your dresses, right? Like yeah. the ones back here. Okay. So. Yep, I do all my own stuff, my dresses and uh, my beadwork and all that type of That's stuff. That's cool. All right, well, I guess, you know, without further ado, we're going to just jump right into this and start sewing this thing up. Uh, we got to get to Grand Entry in about 30 minutes, so we think we can knock this out real quick. So um, I guess what far are we going to uh, start with first? We're going to start with the sleeves? Yep. First, I want to start with um, hemming the sleeves. Okay. This trade cloth I like because if you're in a hurry, you don't really have to hem it because it doesn't um, fray. fray. Yeah. Like but it looks a little nicer to hem. It, it does. You know, working with different cotton materials, sat materials, and other things like that, you usually have to like fold it over twice and then sew like, you know, a straight line. Um, that way you don't get it to fray out. You don't get any like, you know, like strings all hanging out. But trade cloth, you know, from what I've always remembered, you know, you really don't have to hem it to do this, but you know, to make it look a little bit more professional, she's gonna go ahead and do that for you today. So, she's gonna bend it like one side over and just, uh, she's gonna sew a straight seam all the way up. Yep, it's really easy and it, it um, you don't really have to iron it. I have ironed it a few times, mm. but a lot of times if you just fold it over with your hands, it sews really easily. Yeah. And you don't want to leave the iron on there too much because this is all wool. And uh, I've had a couple times where if you leave it on there too mar too hot, it'll actually burn uh, <laughs> the indentions or the, the your whole iron output, you know, um, outline of it. Like you do on the carpet? <laughs> yeah, I, I've done that a couple of times. So. Okay, go ahead and start this. One thing I like about this wool also is it doesn't slide very easy. I actually enjoy sewing it more than I do cotton or satin or... Spandex. Y yeah. <laughs> spandex sometimes, I, I got an order one time. Someone wanted me to sew on spandex and I, I couldn't get it to work because it stretches. And like what I like about trade cloth, it doesn't stretch. You know, you, it's, it's very, I would just say it's... Um, it's very standard, you know, like predictable, I would mm -hmm. actually say. Cause, yeah. You know, it doesn't uh, stretch or move or any way when you start to sew it. And you know, you don't really have to pin it either. I guess you could pin it if you want to, but if I just fold it over like this, it's just really easy, simple mm -hmm. to sew when it comes to hemming. And one thing you want to make sure you do when you do hem it, make sure you're hemming it on the same side with the trade hmm. cloth, because I've done it before where you've done it backwards. I, I think we've all done that <laughs> late at night. You know, <laughs> I, I've done shirts inside out before and messed up, and 
it just comes with, you know, like, I guess we, just when you learn to sew, you know, and then you got to have a lot of, be aware of what you're actually doing. So, like we said, what we talked about is uh, she's just folding it over this way. It just kind of gives it a nice look. And this outer side, you know, it's going to be the outer side of the dress. Um, it's kind of got a clean look to it. So that's why we're actually doing this. It'll last a little bit longer, too. Um, this act the seven band cloth doesn't tear as much as the three band cloth. Mm -hmm. um, so it's nice to have it on there. On some of my dresses with the three band, if I don't hem it, it rips easily. Well, for $80 a yard, it better not. <laughs> That's for sure. So later on, are you going to decorate this? Maybe do some uh, shells on here or what are you going to do? Yeah, I actually, I have um, some dime sized abalone shells that I'm going to sew on it. Okay. And I'm probably going to do the entire top and I have some um, red opaque fire polish beads to go with it also. Yeah, I, I've seen, you know, like women decorate dresses like so many different styles. I've seen, you know, elk's teeth, you know, to uh, denim, um, to uh, actual, what was it? I saw someone actually use um, coins before too. Oh yeah, yeah. pennies and nickels. Yeah, and buffalo and nickels. nickels. Okay, so if you look at the sleeve, you can kind of see, I just cut the, the ends off, the thread, and you can see how one side it's folding in and one side is folding out, and my lines aren't always straight, but nobody really sees it from far away anyway. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the ends where the bands are, um, they don't need to be hemmed. Some people hem them, some people put um, bias tape on them, but I just leave them as they are. So I wanted to show you guys just a little bit of the difference between um, types of trade cloth or broad cloth, what they call it here in, South, or in Oklahoma. In South Dakota, we call it trade cloth. <laughs> so this blue trade cloth doesn't have any bands. Um, it's an older style of blue. This one, you do have to hem it no matter what. It does fray a little bit. And then it's about $60 a yard. And then we have the three band trade cloth, which is pretty common. Um, it's still a pretty good trade cloth wool. Um, it only comes in three bands. It's not as durable as the seven band, and actually I rip this one a lot. But I really like the color schemes that they make in this. Mm -hmm. And then you have the top notch the creme, the creme. Yep. So you can kind of see the differences here in the different trade cloths. There's also a Stroud cloth that's similar to this blue one and it has a white band and the way that got white was because when they would stretch the wool they would have clamps on the side. So when they would dye it the sides where the clamps were that wouldn't get dyed whatever color. Oh right. All right, so what else are we going to sew next? Okay, so next we're going to continue. Um, on the last show, we started the bottom. Mm -hmm. So this one, why don't we go ahead and finish doing the bottom. We started this, putting this on. So we'll go ahead and these were the side gusset. And for those of you guys that missed the last show, the traditionally where this comes from is the old... Um, buckskin dresses, when they would put two deer hides together, the feet would come down at the bottoms. And so that just kind of carried on with the cloth material. This is how I line it up. Um, once again, you can pin this. And I, yeah, turn it the, this one the other way. Well, that one can stay. Yeah. yeah. All right. There. So, it, and actually on this seven band, it is kind of hemmed. So if you can see right there, it's stitched. So you want to make sure that that's on the inside, not the outside. Unless you want the blue color on the outside, mm -hmm. you can't really tell that much. But I just line it up. And try to get these lines perfect so it like correlates all the way across. Yep, because everybody can tell if it's just a little bit off. Exactly. So this is actually my favorite part. When you actually come to this part of sewing, I, I know like we've done like applique here on the show and cutting out designs is like what takes forever. 
this is where I like to get to because this is almost like the I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm almost finished. All I got to do is sew this together. Now, this is, like I said, this is my favorite part because I know I'm almost done. So when you sew this, you're going to go all the way up, right? Well, I'm actually going to stop and I'm really good with measuring stuff by eye and not by like you kill patterns. You kill So when I do it, what I do is I eyeball it and I'm like, okay, I'm going to put my sleeve right about here. So I want to stop sewing right about here. So I'm going to make sure that I can line these up right about here. So this is the other side and I stopped right here. So I'm going to stop right about there, eyeballing it, because my sleeves are going to go right here. Gotcha, gotcha. In some people I've seen, when they sew in these gussets, they do it at an angle, and I've tried that a few times, but you know I'm not really good at straight lines and measuring perfectly <laughs> or angles. So what I noticed is when I do it straight right here, it gives you actually like a little bit more room when it's hot outside, it's a little bit more of a... Comfortable. Yeah, ventilation yeah. and that type of thing. But I do, I also wear um, underclothes under all my dresses. I don't line my dresses because it gets hot in the summertime. And even in the um, wintertime when you're indoors, it can still get really warm in a powwow. So I don't warm any of my stuff or line any of my stuff. I usually wear a tank top under it. So do you have any tips on how to cut straight lines? Um, usually, if I'm gonna uh, uh, cut like uh, seven man broadcloth and then not to be so nervous when I do it, uh, I use chalk. You know, chalk is usually the best way for me to cut a, like a straight line on this. Um, of course, you know, I use my rulers and yardsticks to get it perfect, but I'll, I'll just run it like a, like a small little line of chalk all the way, run it with my uh, yardstick. That way I get it perfect. That looks like it's about even. And if you look at our dress, we have three pieces. We have the front, the back, and one of the side gussets. Mm -hmm. So we can go ahead and start. I like to um, sew these parts together before I do okay. the other side. So we can start that part. <coughs> So what we are going to do here is the seams are like this and they kind of stick up. So it does help it lay it flat in the dress flow a little bit better. So if you have plenty of time to put a dress together or like for myself, if I was doing the dress for somebody else, I would do this. I would go ahead and um, do this. I don't know what you'd call it. It's like an, uh, an extra stitch, you know, going just uh, kind of parallel to the, the seam that you're working with on um, both sides. That way, you know, it kind of gives a little bit more, more professional look. Yep. Plus, you're kind of hemming it at the same time, so. And I do think it gives it a little bit more durability when you're um, dancing and it makes it last a little bit mm -hmm. longer. Gives it a little bit of strength, too, yeah. if you start adding stuff to it. And even though it's a straight line, it's hard not to like just rush through it, but I always try to stop every so many inches and make sure I'm not sewing something else under here or anything like that. <clears throat> so Sarah, where's the next pile you think you might be hitting up? <sighs> you know, I think gatherings. All oh, right, right. I actually don't really dance at gatherings, but I enjoy to go and see the festivities. I've danced there before, and you don't really get to enjoy anything if you're contesting. I like to go and see the concerts, and the shopping is amazing. Um, I'm a big fan of different jewelry and artwork from artists that set up there at the um, powwow also. Mm -hmm. I gotcha. Are you thinking you might be going home anytime soon and go hit a powwow up there? Um, you know, I plan on going home for Easter weekend, and there's a nice small powwow in Spearfish, South Dakota, where I used to live, and it's um, by Black Hill State University, 
It's the Lakota Omnichie powwow. Mm -hmm. It's held by the student association there. And they have a nice little powwow. It's all indoors. It's right in the hills. You're surrounded by mountains and trees and um, really good student association there. And I really enjoy that one. So I'm kind of hoping it's around the same time that I'll be at home so I can not miss it. That's cool. Okay, so we have, right now we have the front, we have the back, and we have one of the gussets. And on this side, you can see we have, are we um, sewed the seam together. And on this side, we kind of define the seam a little bit more so it's flatter. So if you look actually how this dress lays flat, you can see the difference when you're dancing in the seams. Yeah, and it actually makes the dress lay flatter, um, makes it more smoother. As you can see, if, you, if she would have just left it like this, you kind of have like a bow and then it bows out again. But when you do this kind of style, it makes it all uniform and kind of flat and perfect that way. So and it actually makes sewing on your shells or anything a little bit easier because the dress isn't as bulky and it lays flat. Mm -hmm. So it is an extra step to run, you know, two different seams parallel to your center seam, but, you know, it, it helps out in the end. Plus, like I said, you know, it gives a little bit more durability, too. And also on these gussets, um, if you look at this, it's almost like hemming part of it, so you do want to fold this side over mm -hmm. with this extra step while you're redefining the rest of the seam. Yeah. So... I mean, some people might leave it flat, some people might use bias tape, but I usually can sew it straight up, mm -hmm. and it's part of the process. That's cool. So, Tara, when you finish this dress, you know, like, it's going to be plain, blank, kind of like a unpainted canvas. What are you going to do with it? I plan on decorating this with abalone shells, um, just small, dime-sized ones, and I'm going to hang them with a a four millimeter opaque red fire polished bead. Really? Yep. And where would you get something like that, like the abalone shells and stuff? The abalone shells I actually get at Prairie Edge. Um, mm -hmm. Abalones are actually endangered species, so you can't get them anymore. And they're actually quite expensive. Oh, really? And so the ones that I have are from an older dress from quite a few years ago. Um, I have left over. I might have to buy more. So what else, um, what else do you think you're going to do with this? Just the abalone shells? and? Um, no, I'll probably do that on the top. And mm -hmm. then I will also do, I haven't decided what color of sequins I want to use yet, but I want to use some sequins um, to do some old teepee designs at the bottom. Oh, right. Teepee or maybe a morning star. I have um, some Cheyenne blood in me from back in the 1800s, some Cheyennes that migrated up to South Dakota, and I really, really love Cheyenne women dresses. I just really like them. You know, I love Lakota women dresses too, but the Cheyenne dresses, it seems like they were a lot more ornate, and I don't know if that was from being down here in Oklahoma to where they have more access mm -hmm. than what we had in South Dakota. I'm not sure how that came about, but I just really like the way they decorate their dresses. Mm. So now we come to the part where we're going to cut like, uh, what would you say, the, the little flat for the gusset right at the very top, right? Yep. So what I did is I just sewed this down. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to sew it down so that these aren't ripping. And then I just cut off the, ac the excess. Yeah, because you kind of want a little bit of durability, and you know, I, I know from you know sewing it straight across, it's going to give a little bit of light durability because you know every now and then it's going to get pulled from side to side around the armpit and stuff, especially when you have you know breastplate or something like that, or even when you decorate with you know like this kind of stuff, it kind of gives a little bit of weight. So right around this part, you want to have you want to sew it in really well, you know, kind of just go back and forth. Um, yep. What are we going to do after this? Um, now we're going to do the collar and the shoulders. All right. So if you look at this dress, it's all the way around. I'm keeping it inside out while I work on the it's, collar. And it's kind of right now, we're at a box set. It just looks almost like a big box. How are we going to do that collar? So this is how I do it. 
other people might have their ways. This is my easy way. This is the technique I just came up with myself. Oh. I fold it from corner non, to corner. Non-measuring. <laughs> the non-measuring eyeballing system. So this is the middle right here. And I'm going to, I kind of like my dresses with um, a lower neck, not super low, but a little bit lower in the front so that when you're dancing, it doesn't choke you. Okay. So. And here you go. You're just, now you're going to measure, huh? You're just going to go at it. Yep. Are these going to be thick enough? Yeah. Are these yeah. okay? Don't want to break scissors because you can break scissors. So I'm just going to guesstimate. That looks like a pretty good measurement. You, you, you know you're making me cringe over here, right? Just close your eyes. All It'll right, be over in a go. few minutes. Seven band bra cloud, no measuring. No measure. Yeah. $85 a yard right here. Using the force. And. This is going through. <laughs> Almost got it. I might have to use a. So you're just going straight out, huh? Um, no, I'm going to stop right here. Okay, okay. So you're going to leave a little bit of top for like uh, the, the uh, shoulder. Oh, gotcha, yep. gotcha. But you didn't measure that either. I didn't measure that either. Killing me, Smalls. You just have to, if you have a fat head, <laughs> a bigger head. Yeah, um, <laughs> me head. <laughs> um, you might want to make it a little bit wider. Um, some people I've seen do a slit. Uh -huh. I just kind of make it, what I do is I leave it like this. I sew the shoulders together, hem it, and then I try it on mm -hmm. without the sleeves. And if it doesn't fit over my head, I just cut it a little more. Gotcha. Get that custom fit. Yep. All right. So, so this is pretty easy. Yep. So right now, this is what the top looks like. Shoulder to shoulder in the neckline. You can see it right there. Pretty simple. Yeah. And then I'm going to do the shoulders. So when I do the shoulders, I kind of do it at an angle or a wedge. Kind of looks like a wedge. So I'll start here in the corner and I'll just go down at an angle like this. Yeah, usually when I do my shirts, I already cut that like an angle before actually. So, because um, anatomically, you know, you you don't really have a box body. You know, it's it's always mm -hmm. everyone always has a slit and a kind of an angle. So. And these ones, I, I I don't cut it because then I fold these down mm -hmm. on the shoulders. Gotcha. And that's my only reasoning for doing that. Gotcha. All righty. In. You know, with the trade cloth dresses, you don't want a huge angle because you don't want your sleeves to come down. Because when you're dancing, you want your arms up, so you kind of want it to go straight out. Mm -hmm. And there we have it, <coughs> shoulders. And I'm going to, similar to what we did with the seams around the bottom in the gussets. Now, weren't you gonna like try this on before you, you sewed this and we get this pinpoint? Not this part. Okay. So for here, ladies and gentlemen, what she's doing, she's doing the, the parallel seam where she's uh, sewing another like line of like thread right next to her, her main seam, which uh, attaches both pieces together. She's going to do one side and she's going to do the other side. That way, you know, it lays perfectly, kind of like how the gusset uh, attaches to the front and the, uh, the other side and the back. In this step, I do no matter what. Sometimes I skip the other steps on the sides, but this one I do no matter what. Mm. Yeah, because you don't really want around it to bow around the shoulders. It would be look kind of goofy. No. And we've all stepped on our dresses before. And I haven't, but. <laughs> and they've pulled down, so you don't want that ripping either. Okay, so we are back. And as you can see, my eyeballing worked. The, um, the top part isn't hemmed yet, but you can kind of see how we are going to put the sleeves on. 
just like to say, Mom, I overlook this. I'm not proud of myself. Sometimes when you have to, when you don't have a mannequin, you have to find somebody that's willing to put on the dress for you. So when I do my sleeves, I have my dress right side out. I take the sleeves and wrap them around like this. And so then I'm going to sew this side and then when it's sewn together, it'll fold over. Mm -hmm. And you want to make sure that your hem right here is on the inside. And when we only do that is because so like uh, both sides of the seams are attached or inside and no one actually sees that. Yep. And that way it's perfect and flush on the outside. Yep, and then the way I do that, um, most of the time when I cut out my material, I have it folded for a while so you can kind of see a line here. I take this center of my sleeve and this center part right here and that's where I sew it to. Mm -hmm. You ready? Ready. So now we've reached the conclusion of uh, assembling our dress that we have. Um, tell us like uh, kind of the final steps that we've done. So what we did is we did the shoulders and then we did the sleeves. Mm -hmm. So if you can see right here, we did the shoulders and Attach both sleeves. Yep. Okay. And pretty much, you know, like with a $80 material without using a yardstick or a measuring device on certain parts, uh, she knocked it out with Park. You know, it looks good. You know, she's ready to um, start doing some more ornaments on there. And uh, this thing's about ready for granite, right? Yep. And then to finish the top part, the neckline, um, I will probably just hem it. A lot of people also use bias tape or other material mm -hmm. to do that, but I just hem it. So once again, we come to another conclusion of another episode and the construction of our traditional women's cloth dress. Uh, I want to thank my co-host here, Tara Huska, um, for coming all this way and showing her expertise on how to construct this. And you know, I know the people out there are very thankful to show this and hopefully this takes it along and they can actually do their own dresses. And on behalf of myself, the Shine Rappel people, the Shine Rappel Cultural and Heritage Program, uh, I'm going to present this gift to you and hopefully you know you can take this and you know use this on your travels and powwow, you know, and go along with this. Um, okay. so with this I oh, want to wow. thank you very much for coming on the show. Awesome. Thank you very much. This will come in handy. Thank you. And, and it's my favorite color. Right on. And to all the people out there, thank you again for viewing. Um, I hope. I hope. Previous episodes of Making Regalia with Joaquin Lone Lodge can be found online at catv47.com. Feel free to go back and check out Season 1 as Joaquin teaches various aspects of regalia construction. You'll learn how to make jingle dresses, men's southern straight shirts, beading, and more. You can also contact Joaquin on our Facebook page. Thanks for watching Making Regalia.